Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with a preview of Unit 2 DNA Replication. Below you see a GIF diagram showing the DNA template strands in blue and the newly synthesized DNA strands in red. Notice that as DNA polymerization progresses, the top two strands are separated and the newly synthesized strands are synthesized by base complementarity to the template strands. Notice that the top strand, newly synthesized strand here, is synthesized continuously starting from an RNA primer. DNA polymerase will bind here and extend this continuously in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction as the DNA replication fork progresses down the DNA molecule. The bottom strand, however, is synthesized in short, discrete fragments that are ligated together. Both strands of DNA are replicated in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, but remember that the strands of DNA are anti-parallel. This is also a very excellent website to go to to learn all the mechanics of DNA replication. When you get to this website, if you click on each one of these different uh, menu items, you can get four different animations in, at four different levels of complexity, showing what the replication fork is, what the fork with proteins looks like, what concerted replication looks like, including the ligation of the short fragments together, and the trombone model, which gives an accurate 3D representation of DNA replication. Um, also, if you, when you're at the website, if you roll over these individual icons, you will be able to see the definition of, of them and what their role in DNA replication is. I highly, highly recommend going here. Uh, this is another static model of DNA replication that shows all the different players. Um, DNA ligase that ligates those short fragments, also known as Okazaki fragments, together on the lagging strand. DNA polymerase 1, which has a very special role. DNA polymerase 3 on both strands here shown because DNA polymerase 3 is the replicase. It is the enzyme that is, uh, replicates the DNA. Um, there's also primase, which is an, actually an RNA polymerase, which synthesizes the short primers that DNA polymerase uses to extend in that 5' prime to 3' prime direction. There are single-stranded binding proteins that bind to the single-stranded DNA that helicase, this enzyme in green, has just uh, created the, at, by breaking the hydrogen bonds that hold the two strands together. What's not shown on this diagram is where gyrase is, right up here. It would be acting right up here to break those double strands and release the tension as the replication fork continues up the molecule. Recently, researchers have shown that some anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit bacterial growth by, binding, uh, by blocking a protein component important in DNA replication. These anti-inflammatories are NSAIDs, and they, they inhibit the activity of the sliding clamp. Okay, the sliding clamp is a subunit of the DNA polymerase 3 that clamps it to the DNA molecule, keeping it from falling off. Uh, a molecule that stays on its template, continuously synthesizing for long periods of time, is called a highly processive enzyme. And DNA polymerase is one of those enzymes. This is um, a diagram of that sliding clamp. Um, right here in blue is a single strand of DNA. Notice here is the bases. These are the bases that are unpaired, okay, because it's a single stranded DNA molecule, not a double stranded. And this is the phosphates here sticking out. The sliding clamp clamps onto that DNA molecule. It has a hinge on one side, and the other side can open and close. And um, it's kind of like a barrette clamping onto strands of hair, and it will stay there very tightly, and DNA polymerase gets bound here, and it stays on uh, the template for long periods of time. Um, there are also human diseases associated with deflex, defects in the replication stress response. So if DNA is damaged, it has to be repaired, and you need a DNA polymerase to synthesize the new nucleotides to replace the damaged ones. Bloom syndrome is a disease caused by mutations in a helicase. 
This is a ribbon diagram of the helicase molecule. Here is a molecule of DNA. The two strands in pink and green, here you can see the double helical nature. But down here, this is where the, the enzyme helicase is breaking apart the hydrogen bonds that hold the complementary bases together. If you have mutations in this helicase, you can survive, but you have certain uh, ph phenotypic features. Uh, short stature, developing rashes on the face, early in life when exposed to the sun, you can develop a variety of cancers, including multiple and simultaneous different types of cancers. Finally, there are a class of antibiotics that target topoisomerases. Topoisomerases. This new class of antibiotics is called novel bacterial topoisomerase inhibitors, and they inhibit enzymes such as DNA gyrase. If you don't have a functional DNA gyrase, you will not be able to replicate your DNA and you will die if you're a bacteria. So this whole class of antibiotics targets those gyrases. If you want to learn more about this and a lot of other different antibiotics that target DNA replication, you can follow the link at the bottom.